Hello boys and girls, one and all, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. Some have referred to me as the Magic the Gathering content creating equivalent of Michael Keaton's performance in Tim Burton's 1988 movie Beetlejuice. This week I bring you the hotly requested Blue White Death and Taxes, Spirit and Taxes, or as some have called it, Spooky Taxes. I've even consigned myself to playing Spell Queller in an attempt to produce a more competitive list for you all, even considered playing Smuggler's Copter at one point before I quickly realised the card is a pile of dog shit. So we have your conventional Death and Taxes set up, we have Thalia, we have Cat Jesus, we have Path to Exile, we have Ghost Quarter, Flicker Wisp, Restoration Angel and Aether Vial, all backed up by a spooky selection of ghostly tempo cards. And Ephara. I don't really know why she's in the deck, she doesn't really fit at all and I regret playing her in the list but moving on. Accompanying the usual suspects we have everyone's favourite tempo ghost Spell Queller. Now in the past on the channel I've complained and bemoaned the card as a lightning rod for bad luck and being blown out by my opponent. That said I am an open minded individual willing to give the card another chance. It allows us to pluck key spells off the stack and then finish our opponents off with a plethora of flying threats whilst our opponent attempts to recover from the tempo lost. And whilst we are playing the most tempo taxes game possible we look to utilise Captain Tempo himself, the most annoying man of war ever printed, Sir Nuisance of the House Pain in Your Ass, Reflect a Mage. So pushed he even got banned in Standard. That's right ladies and gentlemen, this card is in the same leagues as Stoneforge Mystic, Skull Clamp and Emrakul the Promised End. Uh, apparently. Next up we have a playset of Mausoleum Wanderer. Whilst not as easy on our mana base as the infamous Mana Tithe with Wings that is Judge's Familiar, it is a strict upgrade aside from that. It pumps itself up whenever another spirit makes it into play, like Geist, Queller and Selfless Spirit and the spirits produced by Moorland Haunt. On top of this it can grow from Force Spike to Spell Pierce to even graduating to be a full on mana leak depending on the board state. This card also serves to slow down our opponents and disrupt their plans while our aerial army smashes their head in. Geist of Saint Traft rounds out the ghostly selection, replacing the traditional Death and Taxes beatdown slot of Blade Splicer, Brimans or Mirren Crusader. It gives more synergy to the tempo manipulation and just performs the role of getting our opponents from the state of being comfortable to the state of being dead as fuck, as fast as possible. Saint Traft with the aid of his Guardian Angel is one hell of a clock. We have a singular copy of Venser because he seems really sick when flickered and performs a similar role to Flicker Wisp in being a versatile pseudo answer to any problems a diverse metagame can throw at us. The only problem is that we hardly see him at all with no card selection and no advantage outside of the crappy Afara. So ultimately the one offs feel particularly weak here when compared to green white decks that can play Collected Company. As always the deck list is in the description below and a huge shout out to my sponsors over at MTGO Traders for lending me the cards I need to play these whimsical flights of fancy. If you want to pick up any cards cards from them in order to start your own adventures on MTGO and don't forget to use the discount code GGGETWRECT to get 8% off your orders and support me here on the channel. Every time you use it it makes my balls tingle like I rubbed Vic's Vapor Rub into them or something. It's really nice. Anyway without further ado let's put some of these ghosts with the most to the test. We keep a 7 with 3 ghosts in it that I shall now name forevermore as Inky, Binky and Pinky. Our opponents play a tapped fountain and I assume he's on blue white control from the opener. We play a wanderer. On our second turn we play another wanderer and get in for two. Our opponent doesn't do anything aside from playing an island and we fail to draw a third land, which is a recurring theme that's even funnier than the strange shitty ghost jokes I'll be making throughout this video. However, the vial isn't a bad draw here as it will eventually do us out of this mana problem. Our opponent end steps anticipate because he really really misses Khan's block standard apparently. A first land from our opponent and no action is not unsurprising as we still feel that he's on blue white control. We hit a third land and decide to keep our mana up for spell credit on his turn to catch the inevitable supreme verdict to wipe up these ghosts. Here we discover a weird part of playing Wanderer and Queller in the same aggro list. If we're casting Quellers in his turn, its ability to pump our pinkies over here isn't really that great and it's kind of pointless. I guess it won't be relevant most of the time but it might be relevant a small amount of the time. Predictably our opponent anticipates and then fetches suggesting he was digging for that fourth land. Then as anticipated our opponent attempts to wrath us but our boy Quella has got our back. We untap and draw a fourth land meaning we can now blank removal on Quella with a restoration angel or at least that's how I thought it worked. In combat on the following turn we have a path cast at Aquella. We attempt a restoration angel Aquella 
which he then responds to by casting Disallow. This guy really likes standard cards. We respond by cracking a Mausoleum Wanderer in order to force him to pay for the Disallow. We plan to crack another one if he goes to pay, however he fails to find the hand off his fetch. Maybe his hand is full of planes and stuff, I just don't know, but it feels good. We then attempt to flicker our Quella and get awfully confused about how we should stack the exit and enter triggers on MPGO in order to catch the verdict. I believe at the time, enter should go on first and then exit so they resolve exit and then enter in that order. However, what I don't realise is that you have to choose targets as you place them onto the stack and therefore you can't actually continually flicker a Quella with a Restoration Angel or a Displacer to gobble up the verdict over and over again in response to removal. I feel there's an important lesson to be learned here. Magic is fucking hard. So basically I get majorly blown out here, losing more than I had to to the verdict. In order to break damage control, I decide to whisk my resto out until end step so that the resto comes back and survives as opposed to the flicker whisk as it can swing through more aerial blockers. Either way, fuck my life. Then Mr. Esper Dragons over here resolves Dragon Lord fucking Ujitai, and I'm immediately incredibly jealous because I fucking love me some Dragon Lord Ujitai action. Look at how majestic that man's wingspan is. We draw another Aether Vial, which is far from ideal. He untaps, paths our resto, and gets into the red zone with his Dragon Lord. We attempt to path it, expecting counter magic, but what we didn't expect instead is a spell queller. This makes me super, super salty considering how much we have balls up the Quell interaction earlier in the game. Fuck you, Spell Queller. I play Cat Jesus, strangle his man a little bit with a Ghost Quarter, and get smacked up to the head for five a couple of times, and then concede after drawing a third Aether Vial. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. In the game two, we have a hand of gas and we keep it. We play a tap land, and so does he, and then we play Cat Jesus, and we pray that his hand is full of fetches. But of course, it never is. We untap and play a Geist and have Cat Jesus ambushed by a mono blue Viper. Our opponent plays a very lackluster Stony Silence which feels great for us and our selfless spirit that we cast serves to protect Geist against a turn 4 verdict and we get into the red zone. Bam! Right in the kisser. He plays his 4th lamb but doesn't wrath. He is firmly in 5p territory here. We now have Quella, Resto and Venser up which is a great place to be in terms of options. We continue to smash his face in in a ghostly fashion and our opponent is on the ropes. He makes a 5th lamb drop and concedes on turn 5. GG Traft E. We keep a two lander and play a wanderer. We play a selfless spirit to protect against wraths again, only to have it paths. I autopilot sacrifice it to protect my threat, which is a really bad considering he couldn't even have a doom blade or bolt or anything in hand with the mana that he has available. And the extra lander would have been great for accelerating our tempo. I am bad at magic. I even ask my opponent what the fuck am I doing. He doesn't respond because he has no idea what the fuck I am doing. I stick a thing which is great against Wraths too as it sticks around afterwards and makes life difficult for the control player. However, no turn 4 verdict is surprising and we decide not to overextend into it, keeping gas in hand and just slamming our sideboard to pushing field to subdue fetch lines and planeswalkers. A turn 6 Ujitai is a pretty big roadblock however. Mmm, look at them wings. We play a Geist and decide not to swing in, waiting to instead swing with with critical mass next turn, he hits us with Ujitai flying over the top and then rafts the board. Sadness is placed onto the stack and unfortunately, sadly, it resolves. The second half of our Fink starts to beat in and gets some backup in the form of another pinky. We then have a really weird chain of events. He tries to disenchant our suppression field which to me screams I have a walker or similar in hand. Maybe it's bait, maybe it's mind games, maybe he hopes we think it's mind games so we don't take what we think is bait but then in reality he has a walker. So I just say fuck it and try to queller it. Only to have our queller Quellerd. Can you see why I hate this fucking card? The enemy Queller then kills our little Finks in combat and we feel pretty damn salty about the whole ordeal. He then plays a Geist of St. Traft. Hang, hang on a minute, is this like almost a mirror or something? Our first attempt to ambush the Geist with the Restoration Angel was met with a Cryptic Command. In our turn we flicker a spot on Lantern Lock it in end step. We then end step a Restoration Angel to flicker our Wisp, which upon ETB flickers out his Queller, giving us our Queller back. Isn't Flicker Wisp the fucking boss? He's here to save us and clear up whatever filthy, filthy mess that bastard ghost has gotten us into. As always, in Wisp we trust. He takes one look at our aerial onslaught and decides to concede. Nothing like a good Flicker party to put the fear of God into an opponent. I mean, I am no scientist, but it's a quantifiable scientific fact that flickering things makes you just more attractive. That's why I'm just so handsome. 
In round two, we were gonna hand up all action and not off lands into a no lander, but with two fucking quellers. We ship that away and get a fight that's pretty bad, but I don't want to go to a four because that sucks. And we have a scry and a draw to find a land that will enable our pass will buy us time to hopefully get there. This is essentially a four though, because we're never getting to cast Safara. We scry the Halley Fountain to the top and go for it. Our opponent is a big fan and we've met in Birmingham and signed his Bane Fires which is super sweet. I asked him to say hello to his mother as we will be starring in our latest YouTube video. He warns her against continuing to come to my house, which makes him a fucking spoiler sport. Mountain into Swift Spear feels pretty damn bad for us as we get Taylor Swifted as he gets Swifty. And the grapes are definitely, definitely sour here. We shock ourselves, which doesn't feel great against Burn, and watch him deploy two more one drops, and my arse was so clenched you could cut glass with it. We path away a Swift Spear and reveal a catch he's on top of our deck. We slam it into play and pass back. We get bumped, suggesting this is even an old school list using bump or perhaps the black splash that I've seen that uses claim to fame. I've seen Magic Aids playing it. You claim your Vets and Devils back and end up doing 8 damage to your opponent off of them. The deck looks pretty fun for a burn deck. He bumps us, deploys a Grimmy, giving us as much information as possible, and springs. Jesus decides not to get in on the trade for the time being. We untap and draw Clunky with another one drop that we can't cast, so we path away the recurring target damage of Grimmy, only to have Jesus bolted next turn. He is out of gas, however, his hand is empty, and we get smacked for three. We are in squeaky bum time or 5p territory. We continue to fail to draw a third land and play a wanderer. We cross our fingers and pray. We block Gobbo and go to two. We draw a path, path Gobbo and go to one. We finally draw a third land but it's colourless, which is painful, and we get seed after another turn of no love. Fuck. We keep a land heavy 7 and our opponent mulligans to 6. Cat Jesus, we believe in you. No turn 1 play from our opponent feels good, but Jesus gets bolted in our end step. He has done his job though, dying so we could seek salvation. Praise be to the cat. Our opponent doesn't do a whole lot, so just needs a hand of pinpoint targeted removal spells and burn, so we play a guys to St. Trout and feel pretty damn happy about life. And I love the Great Revels. I mean, which one do you guys like? I don't like the coffee one personally. Well, that serves an adequate roadblock against guys, so we get our tempo game on and bounce it back to his hand to spend some time reflecting on his mistakes. Reflector Mage gets bolted and then we get to slam it again, bringing his life total closer to the desired number of zero. I decide to not deploy any more gas at this point to enable things like searing blazes and stuff that might be stranded in his hand, and he untaps and concedes to being dead to the angel and seemingly not drawing enough lands. In game three, we mulligan away a slow hand and get the clunkiest six ever and decide to go to five again. This five is miles better than the last one, so we keep another pinky on top. Our opponent has also mulliganed to five. What a fucking shit show. Turn one, Vex and Devil takes us to 16. We make a Wanderer pass back and our opponent misses a land drop. With Wanderer in play and the catch is incoming, his life is about to get a lot lot harder. We swing for one in the air and we get bumped and decide to deploy a second cat Jesus because all good holy men come in twos. I mean, just look at Moses. No, seriously, he was never seen in the same room as Noah. We keep beating him off. One Jesus takes a bolt, which we allow to happen and he plays a fetch land. We stick a suppression field to further pressure a lock on the game and we ask our opponent an important question. Do you believe in life after the lock? We get spiked, we misplay and play another wonder, which means we can't ghost quarter him this turn because of the suppression field, which would have applied a full lock this turn. Whoopsie daisy. We continue to slowly build our own bolts by punching him in the face for three damage with our creatures, and our opponent draws yet another fetch land. We untap and ghost quarter his only untapped land, leaving a small window here for him to either break the lock with a bolt or be fucked. Unfortunately for him, he's just fucked. I tell him to pay for his sins and smash face with Jesus. He dies under the pressure of the holy, holy lock. It's Tron. It's usually a pretty good matchup for us as we have Ghost Quarters and Arbiters and Thalias. We don't have a turn one play, however, so we play a tap land, which isn't ideal, and we watch our opponent Sylvan scrying into a third Tron land, which is pretty fucking scary. We play a Ghost Quarter. If I had read this as going to be a creature based threat like our Drazi Tron decks would have, I would have just held up Path for the first threat. But the Sphere and Scrying is just a more traditional green build of the deck, or at least the way it seemed at the time, so I decided to go for the turn two Ghost Quarter to upset the Tron and put myself back significantly. I should have done this in the draw step, not my turn, so that's a play mistake, but I do want you guys to let me know. Do you think it was the right line to put him off Khan here, or should I have just held up path and hoped? Resolving a Geist might be my best game plan here against any Tron, really. 
Um, I would love to know what you guys thought below, so drop me a comment and let me know what you think the correct line was here. Should I have ghost caught him on turn two? He untaps and makes an O stone, suggesting to me the more traditional build of Tron, and my race to Geist feels far less good thanks to the stone. He assembles Tron by drawing into it, because you know, just Tron things. And then he will break his way in my second land, which feels really, really bad. I part the break and he fails to find the land, showing that he only has one basic in the deck. Despite playing our fourth land, we look horribly, horribly behind. Two mana to his eight. Fuck my life. Our opponent plays a map apparently out of gas, and we find out he is black green from the black green land. We play a geist to force the issue of the stone. He cracks it in end step and kills the geist. He untaps and casts Nulamog, exiling two more of our lands. This feels rough, and I'm pretty mad at the fact that he's getting to block more lands than we are. On to game two. We see a distinct average at hand and decide to hedge our bets on a much better six. We get an absolutely dog shit six which punishes us for daring to mulligan to cards that matter like Jesus or Ghost Quarter. We mulligan again to a slow and cumbersome but not entirely terrible five. Going to five cards seems to be the thing that this deck managed to do most consistently as opposed to actually killing our opponents in a timely fashion. We draw a Ghost Quarter and cast Thalia. This is looking up for us. He plays a second Tron land and leaves up the option of mapping for the final piece in our end step. For this reason I play a Wanderer, the Ghost with the Toast, and blow up one of his Tron lands once he's mapped in his draw stack. He ancient stirring and finds a relic he can't cast. If that is Cyborg in, then I'm really confused as to what he thinks we are. We start getting aggressive, slamming in and playing a Wispy Man. Opponent plays an expensive star, cracks it and finds his fourth land. We find a Jesus, and much like most atheists in the eyes of Orthodox Western churches, it's a bit too late. However, we continue the onslaught by beating down with our weenies. We keep going, and Thragtas looks to stabilise him, but the corner cannot be turned as we mercilessly wean the shit out of him. He's dead, on to game three. We have a very, very almost keepable seven. Ghost Quarter could get us there, but without a Thali or a Jesus, I think long and hard about keeping this hand and decide to mulligan to higher impact cards. We get quite literally the shittiest six I have seen in a long, long time and immediately regret my decision. That seven was probably a keep in hindsight, but hindsight is 2020. We keep another slow five, but the high impact cards are there, so hopefully we can disrupt the game plan long enough to smash him to death. We keep the ghost with the post, selfless spirit on top. We play a tap land and pass back. He plays a second Tron land and I sense an incoming natural turn three Tron. If it is turn three natural Tron, I'm about to tilt into a horizontal rage shitting diabetes inducing tilt if this is the case. Instead, he plays a Ghost Quarter. This means I'll turn to Thali a lot better than an Arbiter would have been, because a Ghost Quarter could spell the end of the game for us. With the reason we chose Thali was in the vain hope that it would stop a turn 3 Khan if he did natural Tron us. We untap, fail to hit a third land and play a Selfless Spirit instead of an Arbiter. Him Ghost Quartering us could put us too far behind here, so we start the slow ascent towards killing them with two twos and two ones. He creates a star and casts a 3 mana Sylvan Scrying to assemble Tron. Squeaky squeaky five pence time. We draw a satanic edge, part of me wants to deploy the geist as he might just get us there, but then we will be left to be blown up by a Nulamog exiling our lands or an Ugin ticking down. We use the fresh to draw on edge to take him off Tron. I would say that we're lucky here, but the knight's trend of never drawing enough lands and Mulligooning to five feels pretty bad. So you know, fuck Tron, am I right? Who repeats the same dance, cracking a sphere, scrying, assembling Tron. We don't draw the disruption this time, so we head our bets on the ghost on the coast. Ghost, Geisty Boy. It looks like we might even have this on a mulligan to five. However, then it's the Rag Tusk. Okay, so we can still do this. We slam in and let guys get brick walled and squished by Thrag Daddy. He goes to seven and we play another Geist. And in response, Thali gets exiled by Warping Well. So long, my sweet princess. We hardly even knew you. He plays a Khan and ticks up and we exile Jesus from our hand. Sorry, buddy. We slam in again, taking him to one. This leads him dead to our one one flyers. Here's a draw, a Wrath, an O Stone, or an Ugin or something right now, or we win, right? Wrong. Thrag Tusk number two. As the old axiom states, always carry two spears. Double Thrag Tusk feels like a strong draw from our opponent here and I'm pretty fucking bitter. We pick away at him with our two 1-1 pinkies after Khan makes short work of the selfless spirit. Our two restoration angels that could help us close out this game are stranded in hand because a fifth land by turn 8 is too much to ask for apparently. GG double thraggy. Ultimately I still hate spell queller. I feel like every time I sleeve it up I just get shit on. Not even because of the queller itself but my luck just seems to bottom out when everything goes horribly horribly wrong. It's like a curse or an omen. Like the spirits of industry don't want me to win. 
fucking Quella. So what do you think of the deck? Are there any ways I could improve it? Anything I could have done differently? Is Quella the correct route or should I return to the tried and barely tested Scarab Ruinator? I mean look, it has two heads for God's sake. Two fucking heads, they're better than one. If you have any feedback or input, let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, drop me a comment below, like the video with a little likey button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon so you get an email notifications so that you know when my excited magical ramblings are available. If you want to support the channel more directly, then you can look to support the channel through my Patreon, which is linked below and we linked on screen in a moment. Thanks again to all my patrons, especially Declan Monier, Levi Wigginton, and Robert Adams. You guys helped make this channel run and keep it regular. A bit like my bowel movement, so I can't thank you enough for supporting the passion project of mine that is this channel. I'll link to some more of my magic goodness on screen now, and until next time, think of me when you kiss your mother upon her lips. Hmm.